everyone and welcome back to the Social Flux podcast series. This is episode four. Um, so today we're speaking to Sage Recordings owner, Jay Evans. So we touch on his career so far, um, the label, any tips, tricks, um, what's in store for the future. So I hope you enjoy this one. So welcome, Jay. <laughs> How are we doing? Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. Like, I've never done nothing like this, so obviously. Yeah, well, yeah. there's like, there's nothing to be nervous because, yeah. as as everyone is watching and listening, knows it is just like a proper nice chat, chill chat. Yeah. We just speak about what you've been doing and what's happening in the future, really. But yeah. um, for anybody who, obviously, I know you because we're quite good mates, but for anybody who's watching or listening who doesn't know know um, what you do or what your past is um just explain to them really like who you are yeah so obviously people probably know me like obviously yeah, the colon of sage recordings um it's probably the most thing anyone's gonna know me of obviously it's been boss journey for ourselves so far and stuff like that really um brands just gone leaps and bounds as you know over the past couple of years yeah. three years and that um big year ahead for us and that really yeah. So how did it start for you? Like I remember the very first time, like we met. Yeah. And uh, when was that? It was a it was a good few years ago now, and it was an Invisible Wind Factory, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, because obviously, it, yeah, it was a past project I done, man. Really. So yeah. Um, so two good mates of mine, Danny and Key Road, just done a, a tech house event because obviously I come from a tech house background yeah. at first and stuff like that, but. I was always leaning to that minimal background, so that's why I wanted you involved. You know? Yeah, because you got you was the one who got me involved, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah. I was like warming up, and then you was after me, and you was playing like your first set. And I remember you come <laughs> on, and all your mates were like cheering you on, like, oh, yeah, come on, Jay. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Like, obviously, first set, and I always wanted to be a DJ because obviously I've been going to festivals since I was a kid and stuff like that, like, really young age, just going everywhere. Yeah. So, being a DJ is always something I wanted to do, but that year was like, the year I actually want like I started learning and, yeah. and to be honest with you, like I can't have rushed it. So obviously I always want to do my own events and stuff like that. But a DJ pretty straight straight away. Like I, yeah. I only started learning like two months before that. And what year was that? Twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen, I think it was. Yeah. yeah Twenty nineteen. Way long after since I started saying not long after. Yeah. So it was, wasn't it? Because we just met and then we kept in contact and then you were like, right, I'm starting yeah. my own events and wanted to be a record label and you were like throwing all these things at me and I was like, oh my God, and then you actually done <laughs> yeah. it and I was like, I can't believe that, nah, like, it's no, happened so fast. Yeah, because obviously what it was, I think because of you, why I went with it, to be honest with you, because I was having, no, no, I was having a little bickerments back and forth because mm-hmm. obviously I wanted to give you, I wanted to give you a later time within the set, in, in the sink, but obviously we had to put your face because yeah. obviously Tech House is a, well, I wouldn't put it last no, like, yeah. but you know what I mean? But I think that's what that was like the catalyst to start the ball on the stairs. Like, well, I don't really want to do this tech house anymore. Like, no, you like you wanted your own thing to take control of yeah, and charge of, really. Because yeah. that wasn't really, um, that was that was it your event or was it your mate's event and you were kind of like, no, it was mine. I started it, was just too many leaders in the group, so it was just constantly like clashing eyes yeah. and stuff like that. Like, Kiros, for example, good, very good lads of mine, but. Very good means, but obviously he's got mad ideas. I've got mad ideas, yeah. and I can't have no one else with the same mad, mad ideas. And obviously it's got to be me with the mad ideas. Yeah. So obviously we're clashing a bit with with the ideas and stuff. So I just said, listen, I, I'll leave it with you. I've said we've got it into a nice little, you know, we've got like three thousand followers and stuff. I left it in a good place and stuff. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do my own thing. Yeah. Um, at the time. So that was 2019, wasn't it? So yeah, that was so your was first what... gig. That was when you first realised, right, like, this is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I want to start my own thing. And then how did it all come about for Sage? Like, firstly, how did you even, like, come up with the name Sage? It's a mad one, really, because it's, it's like, after I've even a lot of attraction, so obviously I put it into the universe a long, long time ago. Yeah. Because I've done it. I've I, I, I done graphic design in uni, yeah, but I went to college first, UB College. Um, we used to do a thing called FMP, so Final Major Project. And at the end of the year, you'd do like a big project and you design and do all sorts for it. So I chose to do a music festival. Oh, and gosh. this was like 2014, 2015. And it was actually called Sage. Oh, <laughs> so it's called Sage Science Festival. So that was back then. Same, same colours of blue and all that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. this, this was done when I was a kid. Like I was like, what, 17? Yeah. And that was done a long, long, long time ago. Um, so that idea was always in place. Yeah. I just... I just then, needed like a little push to make it happen. I started Elix, Elliot Ashley. Um, I knew he liked the minimal sound. And I was like, what, what name should we do? And I was like... Yeah. So I said to him, like, listen, like, I've had this name for years and years. I, I really want to do it. And yeah. he went... 
he, he liked the idea of it, but he wasn't keen on the logo and stuff at first. And then I just branded it all properly. I don't know, I, I don't know don't what I usually do. And I pushed it to him. I was like, listen, I want this. And yeah, that's, that's how Sage came about, really. Yeah. So how for someone who's like kind of wanting to start a record label or an event, what what's kind of the first steps that you took? Because a lot of people will be looking at Sage now and they'll be looking up to you like, because you've went from like, it's only been a few years and you're like smashing it now. Yeah. So what was the very first things you sort of done? I, I think with me, I don't really know what I am do really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't, I don't know nothing like, like people in our teams from sound like, well, you need, you know, you know more, you, you know, so yoga bands and all, but it's not that. It's like I've got the drive in me to just go out and learn regardless. Do you know what I mean? Like I've got that passion in me. So if I don't know something, I'll go and learn it no matter what. Like, so yeah. with events, I was just learning everything about events. I could I buy a book and read all about, you know, how to yeah. put events on and stuff like that. So is that what you've done? So you did, <laughs> like, you done your, your first event. Yeah. And then from that, that's how you sort of grew the brand a bit. Yeah. So, Obviously with Sage, we we done guest mixes first, didn't we? So I think we just started off with the little resident ones. You done one yourself and that, didn't you? Yeah. Um, done them first, and obviously it was just a. I think obviously it's it's easier for me to grow something because I've got that graphic design background. And yeah. I said this I done a podcast with Will Townsend from Orange a while back, and I was talking about branding with him. I think branding's important with in anything really, and. I think that's what's helped me the most. Yeah. So it's so it's, it's kind of it's it's been a lot easier for me to just do it because obviously I know my branding experience, so I could go and market so I could do branding. So yeah. just to say if you're gonna start something, learn marketing or you know how to brand things. Don't like just rush it and just throw anything out there because you get remembered for what you what you always do, what you look yeah. like from the start and stuff. Um, but as I said, so I started off with the guest mixes. But I always made short sure look good. So mm -hmm. every content, I went, so some people try and make, they have like a, like the, the Instagram page and they try and look, look at how it overall looks, do you know what I mean? Like we were speaking about this the other day, wasn't <laughs> me about like brands and stuff when we're asked to play an event and we just look at the posters yeah. and we're like, oh, I just it's, don't yeah, want to share too, that. There's too many like, like it is important to yeah. stand out, but at the same time, you've got to like have the brands and fit in yeah. with the brands and yeah, be professional course. and all that, hasn't it? Yeah, um, I think that's what Sage is really good at. Like if you go on your Instagram page, literally every single post, you could tell it's like yeah. a Sage post because the branding is linked to it. That's, that's what I mean. You just got to be consistent with what you've got to do. You know what I mean? You can't just, you can't cut corners. Like if, if it's not good enough to post, don't post it. And people get caught up with how it looks overall. That's what I was trying to say to you before. Um, so like, you know, when people do like, when you zoom out, like, so when you're on the actual overall thing and it's like one big picture. Yeah. You, you can't get caught up and stuff like that because you, you're you not going to be posting. But it's like, if you make sure like every post is good quality, it'll look good overall anyway, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you don't get caught up on the overall look straight away. Just make sure every single content that you post is good. Yeah. But yeah. And how often do you like, you just try and post? Because I know Instagram has like, kind of like an algorithm, yeah. doesn't it? And, it's like it's hard to get around it like you have yeah. to like get a certain number of likes saves comments for it to like come up on instagram for people to see it so how do you work around that it's it's a tough one as you said because they, they change their algorithm every mm. every two minutes so it's just like you've just got to keep up with the trends really like instagram kind of like the um so when you introduce something new so now you've got the igtv and now you've got the reels and stuff we haven't explored the reels but that's what we're going to do next because the stuff that you use. So if they bring something new out and you use that a lot, they'll prioritize your stuff more because you're using their content more. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, that's that's the way they are. So you, need, you just need to be utilizing all their things. So when they brought out the carousel, you know, you can have 10 pictures. Yeah. If you use 10 pictures, they're going to prioritize your post more. Yeah, and definitely. But it, it's a tough one because I want to be posting every day. I want to be posting twice a day, three times a day. But if you haven't got the content, you haven't got the content. Yeah, you've you know just I mean? got to have the content, haven't you? Like after we we ended last year we on a real real high, you know, with the live EP and stuff like that and we we're getting like like four hundred and something likes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And after that we didn't have much content to post because we were setting up this whole year now. And because we took that little break and our recent posts are only getting like seventy likes. So Yeah, it's, I it's find tough. like that even with my yeah. posts, like 
when when I was playing loads of events and posting loads, I was getting like loads of likes, loads of views on stuff. And now, because I've had a little break and I haven't really been posting, and I post something now, and I just I don't really get the the same amount of feedback. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I've got nothing to post for it because I'm not really doing anything. So social flux for me has been a big help because it's I'm yeah. posting more, like I'm getting my name out a little bit more with networking. Obviously, with this, I can get like guests in and network yeah, a bit yeah. more. Um, but yeah, you obviously were said you started with the free download series as well, which yeah. I think that really helped you, especially on SoundCloud. You were getting like loads yeah. of loads of views and plays on that, so yeah. that then got your name out, didn't it? Yeah, I think with free download, it's as said like in marketing thing. I was, I was, I was always got taught like in the marketing aspect, like say if you're doing a business or something, and like if you can offer your customers something for free for now. That'll attack them to stay with you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So, like, when I looked at it, like, the tracks wise, that's why we're still doing free downloads. I mean, we've ended the series now because, you know, we've gone above the next level now and we're yeah. to the next part. But for the whole year or whatever we've done free downloads, it's been a massive thing for us because it's grown our followers massively. And, like, we're giving away tracks for free, but we're getting hundreds and hundreds of followers in return. Yeah. So, like, if you're starting a brand, do stuff like that. It's like, you've got to give to receive, do you know what I mean? And that's that's the best way to grow at, at, at the start, unless you've got money, of course. But, yeah. You know what I mean? Not everyone has. <laughs> it's like, I but, know. Yeah. But, um, go on. No, I'm just trying to think what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> but from the free download series, then when was it that you sort of kind of realised, right, I want to do, like, a proper release? Um. Well, was this like a year down the line? How long you were so, doing the free downloads? So st- was it? So we started Sage September, done the freebie party. That was a little in store thing. Where what year was that? September twenty nineteen. So twenty nineteen. Yeah. Before, yeah. Um, done done the freebie party. Just a little in store. It was an alright little night, and then obviously we done the. So just after after New Year, we done the mail and like the Ryan Warren County headline event in the yeah. North Shore. Oh. That was a good night, Danny. Yeah, that was, was a really good night. That was a good turnout for that. So obviously after that, we were like, okay, this can actually go somewhere. Um, a month later, we knew we could get cable cut for free. Yeah. So we were like, do you know, let's take the risk of money. The turnout weren't the best, but I met good contact there. And, and at least you've got your name out in Manchester that's, then. That, that's it. So I've got the money crowd and I've, you know, I've got good meets now from Manchester from that night. Um, so obviously fair down the line, a couple of months later, we were still doing free download and stuff like that. And the goal was always to be a label. Yeah. Like from from the start, it was always to be the goal, uh, be a label. But that was like three three years down the line, not 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 within our first proper years. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like it's proper we plan- tough. We were, we were saving up like for the events and stuff, and then obviously lockdown hit and yeah. it affected everyone, and then not not and keeps me down. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, well, if, if I can't do events, I'll go and do what I want to do and with the label, but. The only reason why we start releasing was Parsec, really. You know, without him, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't be where where we are now. I think because he was our first release, he was our first free download. Well, second free download, but I mean, like he's, he's, his free download, the biggest one for us. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he was the one who kickstarted that. So I was constantly like, oh, I've got Parsec on on the label now. Can I get you? And then yeah, that that um that snowball effect. So I get one artist. Oh, I've got this one. Can you get me? And then it just went from there, really. Yeah. And obviously, this year, the artist we've got is ridiculous, like, absolutely insane. And, like, uh, you've named, <laughs> like, I know you've named a few to me in private, but yeah. can you say any? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, obviously, Della Swing is, uh, yeah, I'll name him. He's coming up. Um, I'm yeah. not going to too much. He, he's, I'll name him because he's been an inspiration for, for music anyway. Um, back from my tech house days, I've seen him so many times. So, you know, he's a big inspiration to me. So back then, he's massive. And then I seen him. Obviously, as 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 we've started growing slowly with the label and stuff, I've seen that he's coming over to minimal. And funnily enough, like he, he followed us first. Yeah. And it was a shock That's to us. It. Like, it's like why is he following us? Yeah. At the time, we were only on like three K followers. So I was like, why, why are you following us? <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? And then. Um, he was just like, I like your stuff and like that, do you know what I mean? And then, so I was just constantly casing him next and, and he was going to message me, so I was just on, on his case, like, you know, because if everyone wants something, I'll go and get it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's like, give me a talk, lad. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like constantly. And then it came right and I, I got a certain artist, I'm not going to name the artist and stuff, got a certain artist on EP, yeah. it fit every criteria for Della Swing and now we've got him on the label coming up and it's, it's honestly, it's a huge release. 
like I'll tell you it's supported by it's support like East End Dubs, um, Jocko, like Tom and like all the big boys are supported by it's downloaded by them. Uh, Chelmerton and everyone. So it's yeah. it's a big, big EP so that's coming out. So that's, that's I'm looking forward to that. Do you know when's that coming out? It's waiting on the final press now, so final. Oh are, god, that's I think a while, final isn't it? <laughs> uh, nah, it's our first final release, so there you go, exclusive for Paige, yeah. <laughs> but nah, so obviously Social it's Social Flux exclusive. Uh, yeah, so obviously it's our first final EP, so obviously waiting on the final press now, so... Yeah. And that's huge for, like, how yeah. long you've been, like, doing sales, because it's not been that long, hasn't yeah, it? So the label started in May, and it's, you know, it's only been, like, 10 months. Boss, boss. So, I mean, uh, we've got four, four final EPs up this year. Amazing. And you see, you know, if obviously, you know, the big name there, so probably even bigger artists come on. It's just honestly, it's, yeah, it's, it's just like a rather snowball effect, really, isn't yeah, it? It's just going to get better. But like you touched on Law of Attraction before, and I know yeah. you're always banging on to me about <laughs> it. And like sometimes I believe it, then sometimes like I'm just like, no, yeah. I just, but you're always saying to me, write down like what you want yeah. and you'll get it. So, what, what, like any tips for people? But obviously, obviously. My mind's obviously not always full in love attack. I do believe in it, but obviously even my own mind convinces me otherwise at times, do you know what I mean? But yeah. I do believe in it a lot. Like what you say comes to in a way, like say if you say it and believe it, you know, obviously you can achieve it and all that. But yeah. I think no, it, it it generally happens like there's been so many times where I've actually you know like I've tried manifesting and it's actually happened. Like it's it, do you know what I mean? Like I said we want a five K Instagram followers um by by December, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it coming up to it, and it happened. And so I've, I've voted our next time down. So I'll say it again. You know, 10k followers June this year, and see it happens. You know what I mean? But yeah. I keep saying, I keep putting that out there, and I'm a strong believer in it. I think that's why she just comes so far because, like, as you you know, as you can say, like when I, I visualize stuff a lot. Yeah. Like, so if I'm in the car. I'll listen to a track and I'll visualise me playing it somewhere, like, you know, like, like, like obviously I've got that Bulgaria festival coming mm. up, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll visualise, and that's when he mentioned something about it, I'll visualise myself playing there and then he ends up asking me, Shut do up. you want to play there? So what it, like, I obviously know what the festival is, but for everyone who's watching and listening, what is the festival? So it's called Where, Where We Are Festival, it's in Bulgaria, it's only a small, so it's only been gone a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, obviously they're trying to grow it more and more. So this year they've actually got a belt of location in Varna, in Bulgaria. Yeah. Um, gorgeous location, beach and that. And so this year they wanted to go a bit more out, all out, so getting a lot of stuff included and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so obviously, and I'm obviously I'm the first international artist they've booked, which is which Yeah, is I was crazy. looking at the line <laughs> and literally I don't recognise any name, yeah. but yours are all like proper foreign names who I've never yeah, seen before. It's it's crazy and like the, 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 they're even like promoting it as the first international artist and it's just it's just sounds mad that's fucking crazy I'm just, I'm just all laughing with you know what yeah. I mean like, and it's just it's just it's just crazy but as I said like because some fella um, I know him anyway so obviously he, he he does graphic design and stuff so I know him from his design and like, we used to show share ideas and stuff and yeah. he said get on this and I looked at it and that's what I'm saying I was just visualising myself playing at this festival and it happens and it happens he put me on touch with contacts and I was visualising it each day and I was like listen I'm going to play you and it got confirmed and now September the 3rd and that I'm going yeah. over what the hell? And that <laughs> is literally just proof that law of attraction does work really yeah it's just it's just got to visualise it like honestly the stuff that's happening in your yeah. life just visualising it it will come out it will come to obviously you still got to put the effort in but yeah. it creates opportunities in your life I, I think I'm a strong believer in it anyway yeah boss Um, I think a topic that I think is like really important to touch on especially at the minute is mental health uh, yeah. Um, and I know you've been doing a lot of work and you've got a lot of work coming up for mental health Um, and you've been struggling over the, the past few years with your mental health with like depression yeah. and anxiety and stuff so as Sage kind of helped you through it, or how have yeah. you been dealing with it? And how's, how's it helped? Sage so just like me, uh, everything, you know what I mean? Like, without that, like, I don't know, why. Like, it's just it's what pushes me, really. Um, because like, that's my life at the end of the tunnel, you know what I mean? Like, that's what's getting me through everything at the minute, you know what I mean? Obviously, I've got close people around me that's getting me through things, but Sage so is my goal, you know what I mean? Like, it's obviously, my life's a big thing for me, and I have suffered a lot, but. It's it's more like it's not affecting Sage. It's pushing me to do Sage more. Yeah. It's giving me that passion, that drive. Because I just think like 
it's Monday, it's got it all in, you know what I mean? So it's just, I just want that happiness, but it's shared just me happiness, so. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you're, doing, you're doing a bike ride, aren't you? Yeah, so obviously, if, if no one's seen it, um, obviously, I've done a video for search, um, talk about my mental health issues. Um, so obviously, um, I got briefly into it. Um, and from a young age, I found my mum passed away. Um, drug overdose and from there it's leading on to a lot of obviously psychological problems with myself and um, depression anxiety the lot um so obviously i've bottled that up for years and obviously i go to talk on this video um and i just basically say like the lads need to open up and know it's, it's becoming worse now especially during lockdown and all yeah. so mental health's a big thing for me and um, a lot of suicides and everything so I just you know obviously people need to start speaking up about it really. Like it's a big stigma yeah, around yeah. it where lads can't speak up around it. And obviously I, I thought that myself. I found you just obviously I've been suffering for years, but it's only been the past couple of months where I've actually spoke to people about it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Um so obviously it got really bad in December, obviously I went through sad and obviously I wanted I wanted to do it and stuff. Um from there onwards, I was going to a place called Sean's place, magnificent place by the way. Um, set up by a woman called Debbie Rogers, and yeah, so she set it up because her brother tragically killed himself and stuff. And obviously, she set this up as a charity because back when he was alive, there was nothing like it. Yeah. And obviously, it's just devoted to help people like myself suffering with mental health. And you know, they've got all sorts of things. So I have a Friday fit fitness class, and you know, I've got a fishing class on Mondays. You know what I mean? Like I've, oh, I'm going fishing and all that. Yeah. So obviously, I thought. I've got Sage there. I put it out there on Sage. Want my life? It'll bring in a few followers for for Sean's place and hopefully a few donations and stuff. And we're doing a big, massive bike ride uh, from here to South Wales. It's like oh 137 God, miles. 137 miles there. 137 miles, something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna be camping over. I mean, like, so gonna be goosed. Like, honestly, I'm gonna be knackered off that. But yeah, it's... like I literally couldn't do that. Like I've just recently got a bike, and oh my God, when on my first. Well, I've been on bike rides and stuff, but like a proper long bike ride right. last week and all week I've been like a fucking robot. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Like, like I've done 20 miles Sunday, man. It's just probably taking me out of me. So yeah, that is amazing yeah. though. Like, yeah. and how how'd you do, Nate? Yeah, so obviously, I don't know the link's up yet, but it's going to be up on Sean's place. They're going to post it first. Um, and obviously, the video's up on search and stuff. So. Anyone can, that'd be great. Don't need that because it's going to a good cause and it's going to help lads like myself. Because um, as I said on, on the video, without them, I wouldn't be here and Sage wouldn't be here and stuff. So it's, you know, it's a big thing for me. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, Sean's place with the gaff. Amazing. That'll be, <laughs> that'll be sick. Well done. Nice one. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, but back to the, back to the label. I know a lot of people watching this will find this like really beneficial. There'll be like a lot of up and coming producers and stuff out there. And they'll be thinking, how do I get noticed by a label? Because I know it is quite hard to get your name mm. out and especially trying to get yourself across in a professional way, but then at the same time, getting yeah. your tracks across and what, because you're, you're probably inundated with like loads of emails with tracks trying to get them signed. Yeah, what kind of stands out for you? It's a tough one there, because I don't want to come across as like a snob and that's mm. just turn people down and stuff like that. but. No, I, I I work a full time job while doing this. Like I haven't got time to go listen through absolutely everything and then reply to them. And you can see, like a lot of people do get a cop on with me to be honest. With you. Like, yeah. I guess I'm snotty replies. Like, well, why aren't you replying to what? Like, you've listened to it, and I'm like thinking, like, I haven't got time to keep replying to absolutely everyone. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's it's like. I don't know, it's, it's a tough one because obviously I go through the social media channels as well. I know I shouldn't, you should always judge them on the music, but I'm in a generation now of social media and you need your social media to look good as well. Like, yeah. Like, there's people, for, for, like, for, for example, with guest mix, um, people want to do a guest mix, but they haven't got pressure photos. Why would, why would I want you to do a mix when you haven't got a photo? It's just yeah. you in your bedroom, for example. And yeah, so it's 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 it's, it's not, not like like if you posted that onto say it's just not gonna look professional <laughs> for you, is it? Exactly. So you've got to think of it both ways. Like in the bedroom with the boxies in the background and the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely like you know, that's yeah, it's not good, is it? But no. that's it. Like you you've got to think of like what you can benefit the label. Like if I'm I'm looking at artists, I need to see what they can give me as well as as well as the music. Yeah. Whether they've got any pull and stuff. But 
as I said, like, if she, you know, an email, for example, like, we get emails and we click on the SoundCloud link to listen. It's got like 2,000 listens on it because they've sent us to every single label. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you want to get them on that, do you? Yeah. No, you, you want to you send it exclusively to the label that you want. Send them a nice message exclusively to the label. Like, I, like, I like what you're doing. Maybe just say, like, what, 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 what releases you've got. And don't even like it. I like, for example, like people message me on Instagram and then I'll, I, I'll reply back and then straight away as a demo. Yeah. Like I'm not going to bother, like, talk to me, like, network. Like, that's how I've got shares. I haven't just went straight in. I want you on my label. I've spoke to them, built a network, and then a couple months down the line, I said, do you want to be on the label and stuff like that? Which is, hello, you know, there's a link. You know what I mean? It, 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 you, can't, yeah. you, can't, you can't be doing that. So, yeah, to, to, I'd say, like, and also, I'd say I judge people on... Shouldn't like or what they've previously released on, yeah. Um, because like there's too many artists that are just happy to just release on every, everywhere, and there's a few people right now doing podcasts talking about this sort of thing. Um, if you want to be on the bigger labels, you've got to be more selective with your tunes, you can't just be posting like 30 tracks a year, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like there's some artists that only release like four times a year, but they're all selected to that to the labels that they want yeah do you know what i mean i think that that works as well with events as well i think i've realized that that's yeah. been a massive learning curve for me over lockdown like before lockdown i was playing for like i was playing for like a gig like maybe two gigs every yeah. single weekend i was saying yes to everyone who'd asked me to play and it's only lockdown that's made me kind of realize no like yeah. i was playing for events i didn't really want to play for but i was just playing for the sake of it because it was just a gig and it's made me kind of sit back and realise, no, like, I feel like I need to be more exclusive to certain brands. Yeah, definitely. So I'm a little bit more, do you know, special. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, but you've got to, though, like, you've got to pitch yourself higher than what you actually are, do you know what I mean? Like, figure yeah. to make it. Like, you've got to, you've just got to put yourself more up there and value, value your own worth. I've said that for you for a while. You need to start being more exclusive. Yeah. Because obviously, you know yourself, you've done your disco and stuff, and now you just want to stick to a certain sound. And we spoke about it the other day, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. That you got asked to do a gig, but you didn't really want it because you don't want to do that sound anymore. Yeah. And like, you can't just take anything and everything. But that's the same applies to producers. They're just taking anything. Like, they haven't got their own specific style either. Mm. So, like, you know, the time they show me stars, and then like you went going on, go on their sound car things. I don't know what their genuine style is. You know what I mean? I yeah. go on Jocko, for example. I know what his style is. Your big inspiration. Yeah, completely. You know what I mean? You go on Chris Dushy, You know what they're like, and you obviously you need to find your own style. So if you all got like ten different styles in your in your sound, like it, it just doesn't look good on ten different labels. No, it doesn't. It look. It's to be fair. It looks better when I come across like say the big DJs, and sometimes they'll only release say like one EP or something a year. That, that's all and I just feel like do, it yeah. just makes it so exclusive and I just feel like then everyone's like wanting them to be on their label because nobody else has got their tunes yeah. and the same applies for the events as well like like me I was playing for like literally every every gig I was getting yeah. every single weekend now if I'm like exclusive to a few events I feel like more people will be like oh, I really want her to play because yeah. she's not you can't go and see her every weekend you yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah. no I, I agree fully like you, you've got to be more su- uh, exclusive yeah but like you've got to have that mindset early on even when yeah. you first start like say if you know you're a good DJ you know you're a good producer but like you know you're only just starting out you, you can still be picky just because yeah. you haven't got the experience doesn't mean you can't turn them down like I've turned down like obviously I'm, you're a bit fit, a lot further in your, in your DJ experience and stuff but I've even I turned down a lot of events you know what I mean? but I, I think, think that's where I've made the mistake like I yeah. haven't really like that last year or so the year before I haven't I didn't turn down anything because I was just taking everything yeah. I feel like certain events won't kind of book me now because they think mm, she's played for all these other events why would we want uh, to play do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know whether I'm just getting in me like a bit <laughs> too in my head with yeah, stuff like yeah. this but like I just feel like this is just like a fresh start after lockdown I've got like a new sound I know who I want to play for yeah. I know what I know what I want to be known for um, so I think it'll be exciting. It'll be exciting oh, for you as well. Definitely, hundred yeah. percent. Um, so you've got some new club around, haven't you? <laughs> yes, new stage. Don't know if you can see it in the camera over there, but yeah. Yeah, no. show them bad boys <laughs> off. <laughs> <It's>, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so obviously got our new club in Mainz this year. Um, yeah, obviously designed by myself as usual. Amazing. <laughs> but, but nah, yeah, big big year on on the clothing front as well. So stage is not just a label. It's not just events. It's going to be much more to me brands and. I've got more ideas down the line, but 
as you know, I'll tell you a lot of what my ideas yeah. and half the time people think I'm man the bend when I tell them the ideas, but they're all happening aren't they? Because I tell you, yeah. more of attraction, I'm putting it out there, I'm saying it, I'm doing it. Yeah. But with the clothing, yeah, so obviously it's on sale this month. Um so where can you buy them? You, is is it on the website? Directly on sagerecordings.co.uk. Sage. <laughs> little plug Link. there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nah, little, yeah, so on the website and stuff like that. So obviously T-shirts, caps, hoodies, and obviously hopefully that expands as well. Amazing. So with light at the end of the tunnel with Big Bozza announcing <laughs> that June events are going to start happening again. Um, so what's kind of in the future for Sage? Have you got anything booked in? Yeah, so we've got um, so one that's fully, fully announced and official. Um, we've got in Brick Street, got an event with, um, we're doing a collaboration with Rich Shot Jacked. Um, so they're good lads, them. So yeah, can't wait for that. That's it. Uh, got Artman, Lavi, Eli Samuel head, headline and that. That should be a really good one. That's going to be all day, all night, literally. Sick. Just a full just on. Just what we need. <laughs> just full on 12 till 4 in the morning type of job. Mm -hmm. Just a little blowout because we've all needed it, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Um, got other plans in store, but they're not fully, fully official yet. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I'm just trying to think, but, but yeah, no, I can't, can't say nothing on them ones. Yeah, yet, you've got a few other big <laughs> plans, but yeah, can't, you can't, you can't, can't, can't say nothing on them, yeah. can you? No, I've already given too but much away yeah. in this, but yeah. Keep your eye on Sage and you'll soon see yeah. them. Um, so yeah, just coming to the end of the show, really. Um, just a little quick segment round. What is your favourite track never get old track that you could listen to on repeat every single day um, I would say it's not my favourite but it's one that I can listen to every day it's, it's a classic for a man and Saint Germain it's Germain you know, it's like, yeah uh, do you know what I mean and it's um, uh, Thank You Mom is it do you know what yeah. I mean it's a belt tune from the 90s 1995 belted track I um, love the vocals on it and that's like a little breaky tune yeah uh, I don't even know if I pronounced his name right but yeah but and there's loads of other tracks that have sampled that as well. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, KRS too have just done an edit of it recently and that's yeah. a belt and to free download that as well. So if anyone's listening, go and get that download because it's a belt. Not the plug. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's not on stage though. <laughs> yeah, nah. So don't but get nah. it. <laughs> nah, best in KRS too are good lads and good mates of them. So yeah, good. No, but definitely one of my favourite tracks though. Boss, so picture this. It's after lockdown. You're on a dance floor. The tunes are blaring. Two seven everywhere. <laughs> Where are you? So there would be the dance floor. For obviously, you. Uh, that I, I do some situations. I'd be for Glastonbury and all and that, but like yeah. in, in the UK, it'd be a ninety-three feet east. That's somewhere where I haven't experienced yet. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, I've heard many stories of how sick the crowd is and how sick the venue is, and even all like the big boys, like they all post videos of it all the time. It just looks a sick place to go. You know what I mean? I've been IB for and all that, so. It's somewhere I want to experience. Yeah, to be fair, I've never been there. I always see like the sickest videos yeah. on like the dance floor. It's something that like, I was going to go to um, before lockdown and yeah. everything all went to shit, That's didn't it? Um, but yeah, are you looking to kind of move Sage down to London in I the worry, future? Yeah, yeah. I've got, got to go a few mates down in London, so it'd be nice to like do a collab or something down south. But 100%, especially that venue, would be sick. Doing yeah, I imagine that. That'd be unreal. Yeah, yeah. Unreal. Uh, and is there any quotes that you saw to live by? Like we spoke a lot about like law of attraction and that. Um, but is there anything that you saw to live by in your life? Uh, yeah, so obviously I've had my dark days in my life and obviously growing up as a Tupac fan, as a big small son and all that, and Tupac should call quote, uh, for every dark night is a brighter day after that. That's always oh. been my quote, so it's just I might get a tattoo there because I'm getting asleep. But I'm Sick. getting a, yeah, but that's my quote, yeah. That is like proper inspiration, I don't know, really. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, Jay, You're for welcome. coming on. I've no. enjoyed that. I think that'll be really good for any up and coming yeah. producers or DJs that uh, want any tips on that. So yeah, thanks, thanks very, very much. much. For your time. I've enjoyed it. Thank you, and thanks so much for listening today. If you can subscribe and like on YouTube, thank you.